they get self-esteem, they get acceptance, they get the male bonding, which they don't get at home because the men are not in the families that often. Everything they should be getting in a family, they're getting on the street. That's why it's so hard to pull them off. What do you think would happen if you stayed at home? I would be like, I'm gay. I'm gay. Well, why? You don't have to be. Why would you think that would happen? Mm -hmm. Cause everywhere I go, there's a gang. Well, not everywhere, but like in the neighborhood when I move, there's a gang. So. Nelly fears the wrong turn could take Jr. toward the same dead end she saw her brother go down. I see him probably in jail or probably buried. You know, if he were to take that road, it's the only two places you can go: is jail and buried. It's a critical point for a child only 11 years old, and many people are concerned about JR and which way he'll go. Although the decision will ultimately be his own, we all play a part in it. To politicians, it's the 26th Ward. To police, the 14th District. The Postal Service calls it 60647. The church, St. Sylvester's Parish. Chicago's Communities Map calls it Logan Square. Its Neighborhoods Map, Humboldt Park. But for the kids like JR who have to walk its streets, the only map that matters is the one they carry in their heads, which tells them where the gangs are. Every kid that lives in these boundaries faces the same thing. And you have a choice, you're either in it or you're not. And if you're not in it, then you gotta be very, very careful as to where you go. The first thing he's gonna bump into is the game makers. And they know JR. And JR looks up to them. He thinks it's cool. He's a kid, what does he know? If he's 11 years old, he knows exactly what he's doing and what colors he can wear and what colors he can't, depending on where he's at. I tried to believe that I haven't lost control, but in reality, yes. They have. In reality, it is a whole community that seems to have lost control. While you're dealing in the 14th district with a very, very busy district, your calls for service are monumental. Out of 135 gangs in the city of Chicago, at least 49 operate out of our areas. And uh, they're some of the most violent also within the city. Get a disturbance of gangs on the street, 1500 North California. <laughs> These gentlemen here stopped the guy in the street, started arguing with him. One of the guys pulled the club and started threatening him with gangs. We just came off the train station, and those two are opposition gang members, and, uh, and they came to settle it right here. You know, they wanted to fight. That's the way it was. They want to fight, they want to fight. I'm not in there. I'm not going to get in their problems. The problem is their problems on gang turf become everyone's problems. Well, I dropped out about a year ago from Roberto Clemente, and uh, the reason why I dropped out is because of the gangs. You know, the problem there is, you know, it's really either you got to either ride with someone or, you know, either you're wearing the wrong colors. It's not worth it, you know. It's risking your life. Some of these kids are good kids, but they have, like I said before, they have nowhere to go, and little by little they get joining these gangs and they become hardcore. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, the gangs are a bad thing for the community because the only thing they put into the community is fear. In simplest terms, a community is what happens when people communicate. Just several blocks from JR's home, you can see what a powerful thing that can be. Okay, what corner is this over here? Right, Evergreen and Washington. Probably, you know, one of the hottest corners in the city right now. A lot of drug dealing. All the kids in the gangs were hanging around. So what happened? Well, a few of us got together and we set up the lights, got some across the street, some here to shine all over the street, and I got to where the police came around and saw them where they were hanging around at it. They don't hang around here no more. So nobody likes to, to commit crime under a spotlight. The police can't solve the drug problem at all, but we can move them out of a neighborhood with the cooperation of the people of that neighborhood. Gangs may seem like a remote subject to some, an urban or a minority problem not relevant to their lives. But in fact, gangs are just the most dramatic illustration of what happens when community breaks down and children begin forming their own institutions to meet their needs. When kids are better organized than adults, you end up with a Lord of the Flies kind of society 
And this is what is happening in large tracts of Chicago and increasing segments of the suburbs. For the forces that contribute to the breakdown of the community do not honor municipal lines. A year ago, the Elmhurst YMCA started a Friday night dance, which has attracted hundreds of teenagers from throughout the area. Also, no fighting if there are any fights. A growing concern at these dances is how to deal with gangs and fights. On this evening, a gang did show up and cast a pall over the dance floor for a while. One gangbanger tried to pick a fight with a local youth who was wearing the wrong colors. You fucking stay in here, shit's gonna fucking start in here, all right? I'm not yeah, so fucking have any time in here. They were escorted out without incident, and the dancing resumed. But a point was made. It doesn't matter where a child lives. If he's not getting clear and consistent signals from the adults around him, he's going to be confused. JR is a case in point. He thinks he's tough. I was him today about wearing green and black, and oh, I don't always wear green and black. That's all he wears up here is green and black. That's the cobras around him. So when he comes over here, I don't want to see him with no green and no black. I don't even worry about it. I just put anything on. But she thinks I'm trying to be in the game. Because the way you act. Oh, yeah. Nellie is trying to keep JR out of gangs. But she herself was once in a gang and still has a lot of the street in her. You know how many times we got shot at here, living here? Remember? Yeah, I remember. I got shot right there. I'd be taking my kids and pshoom. I got shot in my butt coming from my girlfriend's house. <laughs> have you lost any friends? I mean, have you, get, have you lost? Yeah, I lost a friend. Yeah, we lost friends. Yeah. Plenty of them. Yeah. I think we've lost more friends than what we got left. That we all love and miss. I'm not ashamed of it. You know. Because they helped me be strong. Not that I'm saying it's right. But back then it was kind of way different now. So that was a good part of Nellie's life, you know, in general. She had some bad moments with it, of course. But she still remembers some of the people that she used to hang around. She still sees them. And, uh, that's my corner, that's my corner. you know, so she's, he can't help but say stuff. And so he's going to see that in the house. It's just a tremendously attractive thing for a kid like Jared. The police tell you that gangs have increasingly become economic enterprises involved in the highly lucrative marketing of narcotics. Although many of the gangs today are in fact run by adults from prison, their survival depends upon the constant recruitment of youngsters. They know whether or not you got one parent at home. They know whether or not you got two parents at home. They know whether or not you're on public aid. They know whether or not you're failing in school. They know whether or not you're a runaway. They know whether or not you, 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 you break curfew violation every night. They know whether or not you've been shoplifted in Bangkok. So they have a pretty good background on you. You know, the gangs are very organized about their recruitment. They're very systematic. And whether you're recruiting for a gang or for Harvard University or for IBM, you know, you, you have a strategy and you recruit. And if you're a recruiter, you know what you're after. I don't think we compete very hard as a community. The fact is, Despite the obvious dangers and parental warnings, many kids like JR continue to join because the gangs are satisfying some of their most basic human needs, needs not being met in their families. They get self-esteem, they get acceptance, they get the male bonding which they don't get at home because the men are not in the families that often. Everything they should be getting in a family they're getting on the street, that's why it's so hard to pull them off because that pull is just too strong. It, it's human nature, it's things that everybody needs. JR is, is enchanted, as many kids his age are, in those neighborhoods. And he sees kids on a corner who are, you know, openly you know, representing gangs and fighting. And that's, that's exciting for a kid that age. The other place that kids' needs might be met, the community at large, is also failing them. For a lot of kids, gangs become the only community they really know about. and. Uh, you know, it has been said many times, people have a need for a sense of roots, a sense of belonging in something larger than their immediate family. And gangs do offer that at, at a fair price, but they do offer that. Humboldt Drive runs through the center of Humboldt Park. The rules neighborhood kids like JR learn here today are of a totally different order. There may be no more pathetic expression of the breakdown of community than the fact that to thousands of children, this drive is not an artery, but a wound. 
the dividing line between the city's two major factions of gangs. A gangbanger from the west side of the park. Especially summer right here, summer nobody comes because there's a lot of shooting going on right here. My friend, he got killed right over there in the field house, in the ball house back there. They shot him. I don't want to be a part of it now, but I'm in it. It's hard to get out. <laughs> too late, up. yeah. A rival gangbanger from the east side of the park. That's the, we call that the borderline. In the summer times, sometimes we'll walk over there to our side and they'll be on their side. Hey, what's up, man? What you, you know, little argument. And I hear, pa, pa, pa. All of this is all gangs, other teenagers fighting other teenagers over a block. Sometimes you just get sick and tired of it. The Humboldt Park Fieldhouse is on the west side of Humboldt Drive, which means only kids from the west side feel safe enough to go to it. Like many public institutions, the park today is being held hostage by the gangs around it. Because JR lives east of Humboldt Drive, even though he's not in a gang, park programs are practically beyond his reach. The issue here is that where it falls. Okay, if the kid wanted to go to the library that's on the east side, that lives in West Humboldt Park, he couldn't go to the library to learn. It's the same thing, it's just wherever it falls. The library's about two blocks from JR's home, just around the corner from Humboldt Park. These kids, they don't have no, no place to go. They just come into here because they need to be some, someplace safe. You know? And it's really sad. Last summer, a teenager shot several innocent children when he chased the rival gangbanger into the middle of a YMCA soccer league. Thank God he wounded him in the legs because he was shooting down. Uh, and as a result, uh, we now have to bus these young people all the way over here to North Avenue and Halsted to the new city way so, so that we can finish the soccer season. The Logan Square YMCA, located along a gang border in Chicago, picks up 35 children each day and buses them across gang turf so that they can safely attend Y programs. It's JR's neighborhood Y, but even with transportation provided, Nellie doesn't feel it's safe enough for JR to go to. The YMCA also employs two former gang members in an effort to reach out and help other kids redirect their lives. JR has an option in life, choices. I believe everyone has choices in life. And they deserve that opportunity. We owe it to them as a society. And many times, because of the lack of resources or just not having the right people at the right time, those kids get lost. The tragedy is, only a fraction of the kids who need help ever make it to the programs that exist. And some do, even in places like Humboldt Park. The ones who do make it usually are accompanied by determined adults. I feel there is a lot if you, as a parent, go looking. I bring her to Humble Park, like to music, piano, recorder. But, you know, if you don't go looking, for, well, of course, you're going to be negative all the time. Say, well, there's nothing out there. I grew up my whole life in this one whole area, 25 years in this whole area. I mean, without even really seeing the world, you know. Izzy Garcia, who broke away from the gang life in the corner when he began working for the YMCA, now sees how limiting that world was. You know, it feels like I'm getting out, you know, not like I felt trapped. You know, right here on this map, this may look big, but believe me, I know that's, that's a small area. I don't know how they made it look so big on the map, but... Is very small. Izzy's world is JR's world. It may seem small, but the forces that helped shape it are not, and they are of concern to us all. In America today, four of every ten black and Hispanic children live in poverty, and of these, 63 percent never finish high school. More significantly, Half of all children born in America this year will live in a single parent family at some point in their lives. Although the breakdown of community affects us all, it's safe to say that nowhere has its impact been greater 
than in the family, and nowhere is American society more reluctant to intrude.